Yes, everybody, welcome back. My name is Stephen Alson. This is the Panic Podcast. Today, we have got joining us Mr. Adam McCullough, and we have also got... Uh, hang on, I've got, I can hear myself in my own head here. What's going on? <laughs> and we have also got the long-awaited actual return of Ronaldo. He came in on Tuesday, couldn't get his mic working, but now he's actually... Back. Viva Ronaldo! <laughs> it's comedic, though. It's comedic, at least. It was a little bit comedic. Well, cheers for everyone for joining us. Get your questions in, get your comments in, uh, get your abuse in about Ronaldo for where he's been. I've got a little bit of uh, admin that we need to attend to. So this morning we launched memberships on Paddock. We launched memberships because we've basically lost all sponsorships, mainly through my channel, actually. I've been keeping Paddock going uh, through what I get in terms of sponsorships for the past year. Paddock actually hasn't had a single sponsorship in a year. But we've turned on the memberships because it needs to pay its own way. I've lost a lot of sponsorship to the point where what I bring in in sponsorship, my Patreon and stuff like that, it's significantly under what our wage bill is. And I don't want to be one of them people that goes and just takes the government money and goes furlough everyone um, because I still want to keep making content. And if you take the government money and you furlough everybody, you have to stop work. And I'm not going to cheat the system and keep doing it. We've got to be honest with this. And I don't want anyone to lose their jobs, so I can't lay anybody off. We're in this as a team, and we're going through this as a team. So I've got a target on my Patreon, which is to get to 1,500, and we're over 1,100, so absolute legends, everyone that's joined. But we've also created something on Paddock. What we've created on Paddock is a little bit different, and it's it's absolutely the Paddock personality. So you're going to get some behind-the-scenes videos. There's going to be shout-outs. And at the top tier, which has shocked me because it's the most popular tier, We've got um, like a loot crate giveaway thing. So every month you're going to get some merch. Uh, sometimes it'll be merch that won't be even for sale for the public. Sometimes it'll be going out there before the public get it. One example being, we're going to put the away shirt in there probably the month before the public can get it. Like So as a thank you to everybody that comes and joins as a member, um, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. There's going to be stickers, badges. It's going to be awesome. If there's any in the comments now, you get a little badge next to your name for being a channel member and supporting us. But I'm just going to do a quick readout of everyone that's joined so far. We've had 10 people join, so here's the first 10. We've had Harvard, Chantel, uh, DS Canlan, James Norris, Martin Smith, Donald, Zachary, James, um, Brian, and James Hunsinger. You absolute legends. Thank you very much <laughs> for joining on our memberships. Um, and if you want to join, there's more information below. Hit the little join button and you'll, you'll see everything that there is to see in there. And I'm going to just have a quick scroll through the comments. There we go. James in the comments there. Let's put it on the screen, see if it works. Because uh, we know we can put the comments on. Let's just see if I can find where James is on here. Uh, there we go. Ah, so he gets this little S next to his name. See that? So there we go. James is one of our um, absolute legends. Where's Ryan been? mean Ronaldo <laughs> anyway do you want to explain yourself where have you been for months I've been um, carring in libraries at university that's what I've been doing aren't you failing as well no I'm not failing definitely not oh. failing I'm just oh. under strain final <laughs> year problems <laughs> isn't final year cancelled though um, is it like everyone's basic, uni ba at the basically? Basically, it's been it's kind of with my university, it's kind of like under negotiation about what's going on. I feel like they're trying to make it up as they go along. I think everyone's but doing that, aren't they? I think that's basically what's happening. Everyone's making up as it goes along, so it's not completely finished. But apparently, all examinations and stuff are going to be online and they're completely changing the whole thing. It's the way you it's get going a to reimbursement work. On your nine grand a year. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's. I don't think that. I think we're making a bunch of petitions and stuff, but the government's probably just looking at them like. <laughs> yeah. Probably what not. What happened not to like sure. people who was in like second year of uni when like World War Two broke out? So you have to go and fight for five years and then come back and finish two years of like. <laughs> Wonder had a happened. gap year in. Had a gap year in Nazi Germany. Yeah, in Normandy. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> Um, right, so we're going to be talking about Mino Raiola, but I think it's also worth bringing up because I've seen quite a few of the British press 
are trying to cause a bit of a scene. It's so fucking obvious to me that they want Ronaldo's old club to win the, the title. Um, Belgium has awarded um, Bruges the title. Now, the difference is they're 15 points clear and it's one game to play. That's not the same, is it? And as I was sort of saying to Ronaldo before we came on air, even actually when it's done, it ain't done. Because you can get sent off in the tunnel, can't you, after a game. You can be walking down the tunnel and get sent off for something that you say to a ref. So by not playing those games, and I know I'm picking, I'm, I know I'm being a nitpicker here and I'm, I'm looking at technicalities and all that sort of stuff, but it's a truth. You can't just award titles to people because Liverpool could have played in these next nine, ten games and they could have broke the rules, which resulted in a ten-point deduction at some point. Now, I know that the likelihood of all that lot is, is slim, but this is sport and it has to be played fully or you have to wind it back, I think. Um, what's your thoughts on that, lads? Um, I, it's kind of, we, we've had this conversation before and I mentioned it, like if you said to a Liverpool fan, let's say some shit kicked off in the Istanbul final in 2005 at half time, and we were like, well, AC are 3-0 up, no one's coming back from this. They would have. It wouldn't have been. You wouldn't have been able to award them the title, would you? No. So it's kind of like I feel like it's the same, but I can understand how frustrated they are. But ultimately, that's just life, isn't it? We're frustrated at the fact that we didn't get to see the end of our season. Where were we going to finish? Now I know that small fry compared to winning the league Couple and being finals, though. and being two yeah, wins away from it. But we could have won. So it's like a lot of teams can say that. Leeds can say, "Wow." We should go up. We were top of the league. So where do you where do you draw the line for that's done, but that's not done? Like where do, where where is it? Uh, so do Norwich go down because they're well well all season we thought they've gone. So surely they go now, right? Well, but they're not mathematically possible. And to yes, they make the great escape as well, don't they? Yeah, the likelihood is they would have gone down, yeah. but you can't relegate them on a twenty nine game season it, or, or twenty eight game season. It doesn't make sense. Um, Ronaldo, what do you think? Basically, I'm I'm in agreement. I th I feel like obviously I'm a bit I'm a little bit biased here because I'm not the biggest fan of Liverpool, but I feel like if it affects if basically you can't have one rule for one and then not for all, and it's going to affect every single team differently. So as he's as he's mentioned, Leeds have a case, and then teams that are in relegation zones have a case. We have a case because we were on the brink of making a push for top four. So I feel like everyone's got something to complain about as a as a football team. Because even even if you're not thinking about top four or you're not thinking about relegation, the different money in placings in the Premier League make a huge difference. There's a difference between 10th and 8th. There's a difference between 10th and 7th money-wise. So it's basically, I feel like if it's not a done deal, it's not a done deal. You can kind of analogise it like 100 meter race. Someone could be winning and then after 90 metres, they fall over. So, mm. I am, I'm pretty much in agreement with you, Steve. Uh, I think it feels like, to me, a lot of journalists that have jumped all over this with what Belgium have done are trying to use that to justify uh, just awarding Liverpool the title. And that doesn't sit right with me, that. For, of course, I'm biased, right? I mean, I, I hate when people come up and go, you're biased like you and. Like, Would you rather than win the league? Yeah. Win the league. <laughs> Or be awarded the league. They after oh, I'd, ra I'd definitely rather than be awarded the league. <laughs> exactly. Awarded. You know what? I promise you this. If they if they do that, I will make a t-shirt which says Manchester United 20, COVID 19, Liverpool 18. <laughs> That's brackets happening. One. Brackets one. <laughs> Just basically they've got an asterisk on the title. I love that more than you could well, possibly that. imagine. <laughs> They'll force the league through, though, right? We all know this. That I, think so. I don't know how it's how it possibly like. I can't get my head around how you you behind closed doors, not only every single squad, but um, like catering staff, hotel staff, this staff, that staff. How do you close it? We couldn't even keep Jack Grealish in his apartment for a weekend. <laughs> like, how are you going to keep every single member of a squad like away from other people that have been out of that? 
contamination zone or behind that like it doesn't i don't see it but because of the the impact that you'll have with yeah. premier league tv money they ha they're gonna have to force it through That's it. Because it's probably like 800 million on the line and for yeah, i think it million, is yeah, 760 mil people will find a way to to justify doing whatever they want for that sort of cash i'm sure they will and i'm sure that the money is at the forefront of every single decision that they're making. Someone, I can't remember if it was on a video or if it was just a conversation I was having, was saying, um, do you know what? It wasn't, it was a it was a conversation I had. But do you know what? Because I'm having conversations over Skype to friends now, like I can't remember if it was while I'm doing a video or if it was like just literally a conversation I had with someone. <laughs> but it was uh, it, it was a conversation and he, he made an excellent point, which is I went, I can't believe that when they sat down and had that meeting, it wasn't even on the table to discuss making the league null and void. And he went, you're not seeing the bigger picture. And I was like, well, what's the bigger picture? And he said, the bigger picture is when um, the league go and actually make it null and void, if that's what they do, they have to have proven that they've done every single thing possible to try and make these fixtures happen. And I was like, uh-huh. He goes, otherwise, they, they could. There's going to be a negotiation. There's probably going to be a court battle about how much do they get paid by the TV companies uh, or, and how much do the TV companies hold back. So if they can say, well, at the minutes of our meeting, the first time we all sat down as a league, we said, we will make this thing happen no matter what. And then in the second time around, they said, you know what? What we're going to do is we maybe have to talk about this as a contingency. You know, and then the next meeting, they, they actually discuss how that might work and, and so on and so forth. But then they can actually say, we made a, a solid effort to to not um, cancel the league. So therefore, pay us what you owe us. And I think it'd be fair to pro rata what the, um, you know, if you, if you get paid 100 million for, for 38 games, give them 75 because we played three quarters of it. Uh, before I move on... Um, Darthurs458 has just become a new member. Check that out. We can get you on screen as well as giving you the shout out. Shout out, Darthurs. That one. Uh, Righty, second topic that we were going to talk about. And also, please get your questions in. If you've got some good questions as well, bang them in and um, and we will put them on screen and we'll read them out for you guys. Um, but I wanted to talk about Mino Raiola. Mino Raiola's got several extremely high profile clients i would say the ones that are getting the most traction in the last 12 months delict harland paul pogba oh i got we got another new member harold dreyer get in there well done love that profile picture by the way um two new members yeah. straight off the bat well done lads those three players there is a circus around them we've seen um harland move essentially two months ago and already be the subject of transfer rumours, which is ludicrous. Um, Matthias Delict hasn't been there a year and is already the subject of transfer rumours. And Paul Pogba, doesn't matter what he does, he's always the subject of transfer rumours. Mac, just say fuck Raiola for me. Is there any <laughs> reason that United need to be? I can't. I can't. Stand, I can't. I can't stand Raiola, and there's one big reason why I would steer clear of any further deals with, with his clientele. But how much of, like, the Haaland stuff, he's just joined them in January. How much of that is bored journalists? Like, just... Because literally, I read that story today, and it was, in any future transfer battle, United and Real will be interested. Like, like that's just a bored journalist. So I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> he's an absolute bellend at times. And when he does open his mouth, he's an idiot. And we saw him go too far um, this year and have to backtrack a lot as well. Um, and whilst I think there's there's a chance Pogba may stay, and I'm not against that at all, working with, like, dealing with any of his other clients just doesn't make sense to me. Um, unless they're, like, they are dead set on coming to Manchester United. Right? If, it, if it comes down to a battle where you know it's merely the highest bidder, I don't think we'd be entertaining them kind of things anymore, to be honest. Um, and therefore, we wouldn't be entertaining any kind of Rayola clients. But let's say he had Sancho under his belt and Sancho mm -hmm. wants to join United. You've got no choice but to deal with him. And yeah. that's that's the thing. Like, he is a super agent. He, If you think of, like, the Peenies, the Harveys over the years, like uh, Jorge Mendes over the years, you're ultimately always going to end up having to work with these guys if you want the, the creme de la creme of players because they will go there. We've seen Jesse Lingard go there. He's not daft. He knows 
in the next year or two, he might be looking for a fresh start elsewhere. Italy, Spain, who knows? Raiola can get you that deal. Um, so I see why players would go to him and I see why you'd be forced to work with him. But if it come down to one of them, uh, let's just enter a bidding war, there's just no point doing it. Ronaldo, did you ever have an agent? I don't know how many of you know this, but Ronaldo played for Liverpool. Sorry. <laughs> no love attached. No, I never did, did ever, actually. Did, did you ever get approached no, by I an agent? I never, I, never, I never ever did. Never got approached? N did. But I was, I was always told to kind of like, especially at the level I was at, because it was only youth level still. I was always told, kind of stay clear until it gets a little bit more serious for you. Because you obviously you know, um, they'd rather kind of have clients that are kind of pro level and beyond or kind of aspiring that way. And the couple of approaches that I got, if they're not from people that you feel like are actually valid and will help kind of progress your career anyway, then there's no point. So I never actually had one, no. But is I, just it, played, I, just, I, I just played football, really. You see, with Haaland, isn't his dad his agent and Rayola's like an advisor of some sort? Yeah, there's a lot of that yeah, as well I think so. at that level. See, so it's like well, people clearly see there's a value in, in having Mino Rayola's services. We may well, look at him and think, oh, fuck's sake. Well, this is what Every I was time he opens to. his mouth. I, I um, from, a, from a football fan perspective, I can't fucking deal with us having to enter into negotiations with the guy because you know he's going to cause shit. You know he's going to make moves. You know he's going to upset people and, and try and rock the apple cart and all the rest of them sort of things that the negative side of what an agent can do. But I can also understand it from the player side of things. That guy gets what his players want. He get, if his he player wants he... to move, they're yeah. moving. If he wanted to be my agent, he'd be my agent. And you know what the thing is as well? When you look at, if you look at Zlatan, Zlatan has never, Raiola has never been a problem for Zlatan. But he's moved him around a lot. He's moved him around a lot, but he's never been a problem. Now, I don't know, is that, like, is it, is it just him that like, like loves, loves to force those moves? Like, and then he just found his perfect, like, he wants to move around and can conquer everywhere. Like, and then, does he worm these moves around for people or do yeah. <laughs> do they ask him? You know, because it's a weird kind of relationship, isn't it? Like the player, I know footballers, are look, we look at them like they've got everything, but sometimes their agent will be one of their only advisors or only people to go to. And they they kind of probably feel Stockholm syndrome with some of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's like, how Loyalty. much is the agent and stuff? But when you're a grown man, you have to take responsibility for but what your representatives are saying. Apart, I think Matuidi's been at Juventus for a long time, hasn't he? He's not really moved around a lot. But if you look at some of the players, you go, I don't understand. I mean, and all right, Haaland, he's moved around a little bit already. Pogba moved around a little bit already. Donnarumma, he's caused problems with the Ultras at, um, at Milan. Um, Moise Keane, all right, there was problems there. Instigated problems. I think that was just Italy. Um, Justin yeah. Cliver, he's obviously moved, and that you know you could make you could make the case that that was a bad move. Mkhitaryan, he's moved around quite a lot oh. at the moment. Do you know what I mean? There's the, the common denominator in the mix, is, Yeah, a Balotelli, Jesus, more clubs than yeah. Tiger Woods, that cunt. Um, <laughs> one of the comments that we've got here, Harold Driver. Uh, I actually tried to say fuck Raiola in the super chat, but YouTube wouldn't let us. But we will, so it's all good. We'll, we'll see it for you. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so you can't, you can't, you can't use people. profanities on super chats. Apparently not. Well, what the fuck right. is the point? Uh, Mendes is much better, but you know, I think Mendes is equally as ruthless. He just seems to do it maybe in a bit more. Raiola's uh, a sledgehammer, isn't he? And Mendes, I think, might be a snake. Yeah. I think <laughs> with with Mendes, he has a lot more say probably that he lets on. And when you look at how deep that Hestifu run. And, and the, the deals that they get involved in. I think there's times where there'll be deals that Jorge Mendes is is responsible for and he's pulling the strings to that we don't even know about it because of... What's going on with Wolves? Yeah, yeah like, so so that's the perfect example. Like, they're, they're linked in with Jester Fute, Jorge Mendes, all those kind of people massively. And there'll be players moving around that you don't even know that are his responsibility. Uh, Ronaldo, I've got a question here for you off Oliver. Will you play? 
Depends if we'll get through the trial period. Well, Wish I, me luck. I will, I will say, if selected. <laughs> I will There's say only one part for, for someone to, to go <laughs> past the trial period and that's mine. Yeah, I think uh, well, capacity you, is... uh, are, they, are you going for left wing spot, Adam? I, 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 my leg, my pace is gone, but I'll play there if needs be. But when we go got, through the when we go through the levels, when we go through, the levels, okay. we go through the levels, I have to like <laughs> relax a little and sit back. But at this time, I can play left wing. Yeah. We were talking yesterday with the coaches. Um, we are balls deep in our application for joining uh, the Manchester League. Uh, we've been in talks with um, a local stadium. Um, let me just Google what it holds. Uh, but it's a pretty smart looking stadium, especially for this level when everybody plays on you know a pitch in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> like a bit of roped off grass. So the fact that we could potentially get a stadium, it holds over 4,000. Um, so we'll never fill that. It'll look like City. <laughs> um, like 30 people there, I imagine, with Pyro. Pyro is encouraged. Um, so, you know, we're hopefully going to use a stadium because the aesthetic of playing in the stadium is just better anyway. And obviously it's we're better. trying to film this so we get a better angle for playing in the stadium. Um, I'm hoping that we kick off with what I'm going to call like a festival of football. Um, you know, try and get a band, try and get some barbecue, try and get some grilled cheese down a bet down at grilled Northern Soul will, will come down and bring his van. Have a good fucking day. Maybe play a couple of YouTube teams, maybe play a couple of local teams uh, and just have like a, a 30 minute, like knockout on the day sort of competition. Um, that really officially launches the club. When that happens is anyone's guess at the moment. I hope that we get to do it the back end of August when it's still ho hopefully warm and we can have a good old piss up and that, and that'll be fucking wicked. Um, That'd be great. I'm hoping that's what we do. But yeah, Ronaldo will be playing if selected. Uh, Macola <laughs> potentially will be playing if selected. Um, from what I've seen so far, we've got a pretty good squad and we've got a pretty good starting 11. We were, um, as I was putting it together from people who turned up uh, for the 11 aside that we had the other week, we were probably lacking um, a couple of options on the wing. Um, so actually, you two are good choices, I think, for, for being potential wingers. Ronaldo and Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo, he got delivery like that. We've got the black Ronaldo <laughs> and the Bollywood Beckham. <laughs> Bollywood Beckham. <laughs> that could stick though, still. <laughs> that will stick. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for what we're going to do as a football team. Um, obviously, once we no, know where we're playing, like playing that, like. when we're playing, all the rest of that sort of stuff, we'll be getting out there and letting you guys know all about it um, and, and encouraging as many of you to come down when there's not a United game on and all the rest of that sort of stuff. Um, it's just a shame. Obviously, it's small fry in the grand scheme of things that our shitty little essentially Sunday league team didn't get to play some fixtures. Oh, but you know, I, yeah. I am very excited for, for what this can bring um, to us and what sort of different content we can bring with this. Um, any more comments? You could make it a whole mad weekend where the night before the absolute madness. Like, it could be a match day weekend. A weekend we do like a Q&A with some player that needs a few quid and then have that on the <laughs> That's it, yeah. We, we're hopefully going to make this a massive deal each weekend. Yeah, some live podcasts have been in the mix for a while, in the planning for a while. You know, if we could time it right where there's like a, a three o'clock kickoff of United, an evening with, you know, an old United legend uh, and then Paddock play on the Sunday. The timing that we've actually been given by the stadium, and this is one thing that we have to check out with the league, because the leagues at this level are fairly flexible um, in terms of what time kickoff is and stuff like that. So the timing that they've given us, they said, you can have the stadium, but it's going to be six o'clock on Sunday. And I've gone, well, that's not the worst time in the world, is it? To be mm. given as a regular slot. Three o'clock on a Saturday is obviously gone because there is a, a semi-professional team plays there. They've got an academy. They've got no reserves. They've got an under 18s and it's a community stadium. So there's other teams that are able to use that stadium as well. So the only time that we could get uh, guaranteed, like that's our time would be Sunday, six o'clock. So, you know, even with a Sunday two o'clock kickoff, in theory, we could get over to uh, where it is and go and play with them. So there you go. Uh, it's looking and, exciting. The merch is looking pretty smart too. Oh yeah, you're feeling this one. Unfortunately, yeah, this is that. the I one good and only of these shirts that's going to be made because um, we got the 
we've got the new catalogue here from Umbro, the Teamwear 2020, yeah. and they've changed this shirt. So when they sent us this shirt, um, they sent us the last one that they'll ever be doing of it. So um, there is another white sort of polo shirt that we'll be able to get, but this is the last one. Can we try and sign someone like Danny Weber? Mate, I'm trying to sign Berbatov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Berbatov's second yeah. shirt. Like I've been chatting to him on Instagram. He's having a shirt off us, and uh, and so is Uncle Pat. Now, how I transact in translate that into like when you're in Manchester, do you want to just come and turn out for us? Because obviously that's going to bring loads of views uh, for everybody. And yeah. I mean, how fucking cool is it to to have one of them? Because I bet they're still so far ahead of everybody at this level, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> well, definitely thinking, Berbatov. <laughs> Oh yeah, like we was chatting to him, and I said like if we did a video or something like you know, Berbatov played for our Sunday League team as the title. You know, we think we could probably get quite a lot of shares. Your know, lad Bible and all them lot probably share that sort of shit, wouldn't they? And mm. I was like, he probably score like thirty goals in a game. Like if he gets if he gets thirty shots, he's scoring twenty five goals in it. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, it was a player that didn't really like. It wasn't yeah. athleticism that was his key in it. No, no, it, it was. was He's just like te- God himself. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you look at me, mind. he played centre half, do you know what I mean? At some point. So <laughs> shows you the intelligence. That I won't has. leave him. Yeah. So we are planning all sorts of stuff. I can't wait for it to rock and roll. Scholes, he still plays five aside, says Charlie. Uh, yes, he does. Um, I, I, you know, I think I'd he plays at this level. Yeah. Mm. I know when I interviewed Robbo a few years ago and uh, he was... He was late, late in his fifties, I think, already by then, and um, and I remember him saying, "Oh yeah, I still play." F- this is when the soccer dome still existed. Cause I think it shut down now, isn't it? The soccer dome in Trafford. Mm. Um, and he was saying, "Oh yeah," he goes, "I still play seven aside every week." And you're like, "Can you imagine turning up to seven aside?" And you're like, "Is that former United and England <laughs> captain Brian Robson? What the fuck?" And he was like, yeah, "Absolutely still taking hard. your knees out." That's a little bit. He's like, "I still go <laughs> hard," and you're like, "Yeah." I, am I, I, I remember when me and Jay played with him. That was like, that was my first ever shoot with a, uh, like a, someone that made me shit my pants. I remember, nice one, Ulrich. Um, that Ulrich. was the first, like, first time I'd worked with someone like, and I just, him and Andy Cole, me, me and Jay Dino running around, he was fucking mental. <laughs> uh, that was pretty, pretty sick. Robbo's like one of those guys in it where it's, it's, it's like, you're always going to know about him. Like we're going to tell people about Kino, but when you mention Kino, you have to mention Robbo. And it's kind of like yeah. with the number sevens, it's like if you mention Ronaldo, you got to mention Beckham and you got to mention Cantona. And it's kind of just like that legacy is always going to be there. And I don't, even though I never seen Robbo's greatest periods of time, when I was a kid at like 10 and I used to say, Oh, dad, ain't Roy Keane the fucking best? And that he'd be like, Hold on. <laughs> Robbo used to be like, yeah. And oh, it's no, like, you, there's you always that enough. little, like, there's always that reminder yeah. of. Of, of the greatness that has been there. Dan um, says, uh, get Wes Brown in at the back. Recency bias. Um, Wes Brown, hell of a player. Um, probably absolutely piss it if we could get hold of him. Keane was well, Danny Webber used to play for um, Salford. Uh, Salford when they were really low down the pyramid, didn't he? Not that low down, in all honesty. It was only two, three years ago still. Oh, was it? I thought yeah. it was. Did you? Uh, did- did you not see that video on Sky Sports the other day? Like the little um, United Legends, City Legends quiz. And it was for City Legends, it was Micah Richards and Jolien Lescott. And then <laughs> and the United Legends were obviously Andy Cole and Wes Brown. I think Andy Cole was the only legend there. Where's, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Where's Brown's the... got two European okay. Cups, my mate. Why drunk? Disconnect him. Nah, I'm not, I'm not, hey, mate. legend gets thrown about too mate, wildly now. what are you saying? Mate, <laughs> mate yeah, but did, did you see Julian you Lesko. stuck the ball on Ronaldo's head in that 08 final? <laughs> Left foot cross, by the way. His name was Wesley Brown, I'll have you know. Left foot cross from a right back. Uh, Left anyway. cross. Where's Brown getting injured, injured and getting in a career? Let me let me tell you that if West Brown never got injured, Vinic would have never got into the team. Just before Vinic cemented his spot in the team alongside Rio, it was Rio and West Brown. Trust me. And then West Brown got injured. Thirty-one minutes. I'm telling you, West Brown was the absolute. Oh, I loved him. Yo, John Terry was a poor man's West Brown, and he'd smash anything into the stands. Mate, John Terry was no yeah, more. Put his did. head in dangerous places. Yeah, cool story, nerd. 
Watch the fucking position <laughs> of fucking Wes Brown. Injuries played uh, injuries played Wes Brown. No, he was Wes injured Brown a lot. Outrageously good. I've got great injured. stories about Wes Brown. Not only do I love him like that, like I once played wheelchair football with him, which was incredible. Um, yeah, that happened. And I played on the pitch at Old Trafford and I was playing up against him and I was giving him some jib at a corner, yeah. Cause like <laughs> cause like cause we played wheelchair football together, we kind of knew each other. I'm not gonna say he knows me, but we kind of had that relationship. So I was giving him a bit of banter. As soon as the corner come in, he just strung armed me in my throat. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my days. I was finished. But it, <clears throat> but it was an honor and a privilege to be on the end of a Wes That's Brown it. album. There's there's loads of people that we know that you know, I've spoken to different like Danny Higginbottom said he, he'll come and have a, a run out for us. Um and I think for these lot, it's probably is gonna be they might play in one of the friendlies or one, you know, like they might stick around for half an hour in one of them games. What is like Joe coveted in there? <laughs> um, we can't see it on here, but if you go to the actual main channel chat, we've got emojis. So one of the things that you get for uh, being a channel member is you get emojis, and we've got stuff like... Oh, yeah, I made some of them online. There's some of me wearing this stupid hat. Um, there's Adam with his tiger face. There's Cam eating his own hand. There's Joe ones. So you get loads of different emojis as well. Um, so I think we can get up to seven emojis now. I think the more people join, the more emojis they let us have. Um, who would have been the best if it's not for injury? Uh, says Charlie. Um, if you listen Giuseppe to people, Rossi. Ben Thornley's got to be in that mix, haven't he? Giuseppe Rossi. Um, do these work? No, they don't work on here, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah could... unfortunately, they don't work. Uh, putting us on the chat, but if you look in the regular channel chat, they're in yeah, there. I just seen them. They're pretty good. Uh, Wes Brown was good back up with Gary Neville, I think. Gary Neville was on the way out big time by the, when we won the European Cup. Yeah, was... um, well, he was on. Having... He was he was in a jacket and a suit, and he was near for the 08 final. Yeah, he wasn't even in the squad. He was injured, I think. It was uh, that was his two week time. Do you remember when it was two week Gary Neville? Um, and he was injured <laughs> for about nine months. And every press conference, Fergie said he was two week out <laughs> for for nine months. He was like, "How far away is he?" He's like, "Yeah, he's about two weeks." <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Liam says, Can I sponsor? What do you manage to do that? If I'm what? <laughs> can you sponsor if you're lo located in Canada? Sponsor yeah. what? Can you join? You can join if you're in Canada. Oh, yeah, it's worldwide if you want to get it in the mixer. Uh, did someone say Louis Saha? Uh, I don't know if they did, Dom, but good segue. Dom, uh, on I think I've retweeted it. Paddock just posted it. Uh, there's some excellent Louis Saha um poster that he's just done there. Um, go check um, it out. I tweeted today that he was Wayne Rooney's best partner ever, um, and I'm sticking by it. You can't say Ronaldo and Tevez because that was a free. You can't say that. No. Um, that was, that was the time period when people tried to force the four in it, with Berbatov included. It went for... Ross says, still... How do I become a member? If you the look chat... underneath this video, there'll be a button which says join. Uh, just click the join. So next to where it usually says subscribe, it'll say join. Just check that out and click that. That's how you uh, become a member. Go on, man. Did he play like 20 times or something in 2008 as well, Louis Sahar? Yeah, he, he, yeah. I remember, remember the goal against Chelsea in 07 as well, where we, were, we, we beat them 2-0 and we, were, we needed to seal it. Like it was getting close to sealing our first league back um, and he scored a big goal in that game. Mm. Um, Give us away. Um, he scored some very big goals. The, U United tweeted a video of his goals today, and that one against uh, was it was it Blackburn? It's fucking good. That it was a hand grenade of energy and like athleticism, wasn't it? He was so good. I really nah, it was good. Him. Had a decent left foot on him as well. He was yeah, a good was player. <clears throat> yeah, man. He was a good player. Um, righty, should we wrap it up there, brothers? Yeah, nice one. Yes. Uh, are we doing the pod to nowhere or are we doing McCullough and House and Uncensored? Because I don't even know. When? Tomorrow? I don't know. Whenever we're doing it. I think we're doing pod to nowhere for me on Sunday. Okay. Well, there we go. That's <laughs> what we're doing. We can get an Uncensored out if you want, but... Yeah, let's do an Uncensored. Quick organisation. We'll just have to yeah. stick it somewhere. All righty. Um, right. <laughs> Cheers to Adam for coming and joining us. Uh, you can check out the link for his channel in the description. Check out some of the perks that you get for memberships. Um, I haven't been doing the footy manager this week. Monday, my microphone broke. I had to go and get a new cable. That pissed me off. And, that's uh, not essential I'm, travel. You, that's not allowed. I didn't 
travel. By the way, Amazon. I didn't even put Bollywood Beckham in your bio. You what? Bollywood Beckham in my bio. All right. All right. When I have a hair. But yeah, Joe, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been feeling a bit down this last few nights and. I, I, you know, the motivation to come and be like upbeat and stuff just hasn't been there. Um, it got to me last couple of days. This fucking staying in luck. Um, Yo, it's mental, it? mentally, it's it's tough, man. <laughs> but it could be worse. Never forget. It absolutely could be worse. And could, you know, could you, know, be. Um, you could be back in a trench, Steve. I want to be. <laughs> I don't know how many times I need to say that to you before you actually believe that I was well up here. I was thinking, there. listen to this for an idea. I was oh. thinking of creating the YWF, YTWF, a YouTube wrestling federation where we all take on wrestling caricatures and we create a wrestling storyline and mm, fight. Go on. Let's do it. YTWF. It's going to be the next big thing. We'll be like Vince McMahon what to, and Eric Bischoff. What happened to don't try this at all? Fuck that. Uh, we'll, it's a recommendation, not a rule. <laughs> we'll bring it back to the Attitude Era and just fuck each other up. Um, but anyway, uh, it was something I have done in, in my <laughs> moment of like getting fucking fannied around it mentally. Um, I volunteered for something called Project Rubicon, um, which is disaster relief. They use veterans to go and aid disaster relief when it kicked off in Honduras, what, what happened in Haiti, they've, when there's been earthquakes in Pakistan and stuff like that, they send a lot of veterans out there to go and help ship aid over, distribute food, make sure there's water, all that sort of shit. And they've just put the flag out for uh, wanting to get people in the UK uh, to help out with what's going on with the, the COVID relief. So I've put my hand up for that. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take for them to get in touch or anything like that. But um, if anyone's a veteran that's watching... Uh, go check it out, Project Rubicon. I retweeted something from them before. You can go and sign up um, and see if you can get involved and, and go and help out with uh, what they're doing. Because I, you know I don't feel like a fucking man sitting here talking about fucking vi YouTube videos and stuff like that. You know, I'd rather actually feel like I was helping and getting stuck in and fucking doing something. Um, but, you know, what the fuck can we do? Sometimes yeah. the best way to help is yeah. stay in your well, yard and wash your the, hands. The current situation that's the crack in it stay in don't go out wash your fucking hands and jobs are good and but like yeah. you know I, I wish i could fucking do more because i feel fucking I, I think that's why i feel down at the moment because i feel fucking useless helpless yeah i feel useless i feel like i'm fucking wasting my time here um so i think that's what's fucking got to me over the last couple of days so i can't really feel like uh being happy no you should use this time to do as well yeah what i've been doing is Learning new things that I ever wouldn't have wouldn't have otherwise had the time to do. Chatting to my family, which I don't normally like to do, when like <laughs> I've been on the motorway all day and shit. Like so, so far, that novelty is still not worn off for me yet. Give me another week. Give me another week, and I'll be fucked. Fuck it. Right. Uh, listen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure. YTWF coming soon. Adam's gonna create a wrestling thing. All right, cool. As long as you can hit you with a fucking main event chair, I'm me, against, me against Steve. Yeah, we need to invest in some like steel chairs that don't really hurt and tables <laughs> that will break real easy. Yeah. So it'll be fun. Um, do you see Adam Brown putting Joe for a table uh, at the Access Live? Anyway, no. we'll talk about it on the next one. But uh, nice to see Ronaldo for the first time in about fucking six months. Viva. Slacker. Um, hey, I'm back. <laughs> and we'll see you guys. Well, are we back anyway? <laughs> well, we will be back eventually, I guess, won't we? Right, laters. Eventually. Right, laters. In a bit, lads. In a bit. Just going to make sure that that goes over. You still there, man? Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. I didn't yeah. mean to be back. Oh. Okay. Hey, hey. Right. We're back. Bye. And then bye again. <laughs> <laughs>